Welcome back everybody. Um, this is a, a, a bit of a, a bit of a request that I got. Um, now on my early videos I did a, um, a, a video on the uh, unique Typhoon H Pro um, and it's a drone and if you've watched that video I don't know how many's watched that video but if you've watched that video I'll show you what it is and I'll show you the um, additions that I made for it like the um, prop guards um, and the uh, the lights the strobe lights the landing lights because um, I felt you you needed those the landing lights because when you're flying and I've flown it in the dark uh, and it's it's rather good and the camera's rather good in low light as well um, and I, I did it at a bit of a firework display that were all um, and it came out really well but um, th I could not see the landing gear um, obviously when you're touching down and uh, even though I have an illuminated mat with H on um, a landing pad it was very difficult but with the strobe lights that I, that I did um, 3d printed and, and that it's brilliant absolutely brilliant because you can see where the feet are but that's not what this video is about I'm just telling you a little bit into it but the other day I'd, we'd been to Krakow um, to uh, with my family because it, it was my 70th birthday the other day and I had a surprise birthday um, present which was three nights away in Krakow um, with my wife my daughter who and her partner who, who sorted everything out and we went because I always wanted to go to Auschwitz and Auschwitz Birkenau and for me the visit to Auschwitz was um, second to none it was it made me feel very humbly um, and my wife as well um, what people were put through and, and that but um, yeah so I had a good trip there but when I came back, uh, I had a, well, it, it must have been coincidence, but I had a couple of um, emails actually, and uh, not messages from off my channel, but a couple of emails um, of people that had watched my previous videos on the unique Typhoon H and asked me, what do you do um, to learn to fly it? Because obviously you don't take it out without learning to fly it. Well, the way I learned was this and it's unique zone um, and it's a little flight sim uh, and that's a USB adapter dongle that you put in your computer uh, you have a software program that you down I think you call it smart pilot and you put that in that connects to your controller you don't need the drone just a controller the ST1600 and it connects to that and then you pick the model that you're flying and lo and behold there it is and you can go through the controls of learning to fly it spinning it in the air landing start up procedure and that and you can do that it's not an advanced flight sim but it gets you used to the controls the flight controls you know that you know and we all have the difficulty it's all right aircraft going away from you but when it's coming back towards you <laughs> It's a little bit different or that you don't know how you've spun it round and, and that so it does enable you to do that and there's a couple of little test flights that you can do flying into a box while the box is revolving and you'll keep it within the box um, and there's a couple of them now I can't remember how expensive that was I don't think it was that expensive in, in fact on Facebook marketplace one of those for 20 quid um, fully working um, and I found it well before I even took the drone out I'd spent a few hours on operating it so when I took the drone out I knew what it was going to do okay um, and this is what this video is about because one chap that bought one second hand a uh, unique Typhoon H complete package like this I'll show you inside it just to refresh your memory in a moment and he He'd got it from second hand from somewhere. He didn't say how much, but he'd he got one second hand. And the other guy, um, he'd been passed on one. Uh, the lad, he'd 
you know, whether it's from his, his family member or what, I don't know, he'd been passed on one. And he thought, well, I've been passed it on, I'll make some use of it. But, and quite sensibly, there's a lot of people get the drone, first thing they do, stick battery in, get it, do whatever, and then up in air, and then next thing they know, they've got broken blades. Um, and it's wise to learn this on that before you take it out unless you're an experienced uh, drone pilot then it doesn't matter and nowadays and we've all seen what's happening in ukraine between ukraine and russia the drones have come of age let's face it what ukraine are doing with them is outstanding uh, and russia's learning as well so it's becoming uh, autonomous now out on the battlefield and the becoming drones now that you can buy are far far more sophisticated and complicated than this although this does look like that um, but this has some good features the camera's 4k um, and it's a full um, 360 degree gimbal um, the camera you have full control over it whether it's video or stills whichever you want to do and you can alter the the quality of that as well so it is quite um, uh, an advanced drone, but it doesn't have a zoom on the lens. Whereas now, a lot of the DJI's and that, they have actual um, zoom and other um, capabilities. And the distance, I think, are greater. Um, this this drone here, you know, it, the control, when I, when I show you and take it out, and there's videos out there, um, the control um, panel itself is a complete tablet as well you can use it offline as a tablet um, it's quite big is st st16 <laughs> let's get it right and it's the more up-to-date one where it has two aerials and a center one okay um, i'm not going to go into how you operate the um, tablet because that's not what this video is about um, but it's just to show, um, and I said I'd do a video, it's just to show that you, you're very wise <laughs> if you if you get something. There might be another simulator out there that you can connect with your controller, I don't know. But if you can, it's certainly worthwhile because it gives you that experience. You can get used to which way to put the sticks and, and land them and, and, and the landing gear come up as well. Um, so it is a very good piece of kit. And, and as I say, I think when I got it, it was about, what, about £45 um, for such a little thing, but it's worthwhile because um, crashing it, um, it'll cost you more than that in blades and anything else that it breaks. Um, it is a quite a robust um, drone, but at the end of the day, um, it's only as good as the pilot that's got the controls um, so and and one thing I will say is I've used this um, I mean it's still like new there's no damage marks on it whatsoever and that's solely I believe is due to being able to use that there are things you have to get used to um, and 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 it's operating the camera and well it's hovering and that's what I tend to do is I've inspected my roof I inspect it every 12 months and and if I think there's something falling down on the roof because I have two flat roofs front and back door my bedrooms um, so I can go along and I've got excellent video of uh, the roof condition I can check all my, my solar panels that I've got um, just take it up and look take the video and it's 4k now because you've no zoom you've got to remember is I have to get close if I want a detail because inevitably even with 4k if you enlarge it or blow the picture up it, you can get to a stage where you want it and it starts to go pixelated um, but with the zoom you can actually zoom in there I, we don't have that facility on here and I, I don't know whether one of the other cameras on the modern ones I, I don't know I don't know about that um, but I've not only just done my roofs I've done family's roofs when they've asked and I've done friends you know not necessarily flat roofs there have been some flat roofs but pitch roofs chimney stacks looks a bit grubby so you fly it up and take some pictures without even getting up and they can get a builder in which a couple
couple of them have family members have done they've, they've actually got the builder in and uh, he's looked at the video and it's been that good that he said yeah yeah i don't have to go up to inspect it to see what i find you know what the damage is and you know what he's going to repair and then he's given him a quote and it's been that and when he's done it they've asked me to put the drone up and check the works okay and i have done so it does it and they're doing a lot of house surveys building surveys now with drones so they're coming to a, the league of their own now um but I'm going to show you this and just go through what's in it and then uh, you can know so right, as you can see this is a full backpack and it's a well made backpack um, and it's different compartments in it now I'll pop that down there and it's it's one of those it's all polystyrene line so for cushioning the um, drone in fact I'll bring you over nearer this is a drone this is how it's packed okay um there are two batteries those are the batteries the quite heavy duty batteries um i think these are 5400 um, four cell milliamp power batteries and i have got two extra ones There's, there should be another one there but it's actually in the drone okay you get a box with the blades in and you can see that the blades they're original and i've flown this a number of times so you can see there are some spare ones under here but you can see that you look after things especially when you, you're learning it with the um as i've advised the two gentlemen that emailed me then you get a box of um accessories um there's things like um battery checker you know a compass um, and different leads and what have you I can actually charge from separate battery chargers as well so I don't necessarily have to use the battery charger that comes with it okay I'll take these out because you need these out to take the drone out that's the battery charger as you can see the um, it has an output USB which charges the S ST1600 um, that's the um, the USB connector and then it goes to a small one so you can charge that that's your power input which you have a it's in the bag here is the power brick okay take the battery out that's what they call a wizard this all came as a pack now when I originally got this probably seven years ago more probably my wife bought me when she retired um, from nursing or rather from one place a uh, place of work she actually said you've been after a drone I had a small one which I will show you um, which I did learn on uh, and she says I'm going to treat you to something so and I, I purchased this that is what they call a smart wizard okay linking in the um, this will link to the st1600 as, as well and you can control you don't need that then you can control your drone with this okay so once it's connected and bound or binding as they call it you can put that in your back pocket get on your mountain bike put it in follow me mode and because this drone has obstacle avoidance on it will follow you it will go around trees and it will keep that you in the camera um, focal point okay so it will follow you at the distance that you've you've set it okay I've never used that um, I like to see me drone not what's behind me um, but it came with a kit it's rechargeable there's no batteries in it it's rechargeable um, I've had it linked to the um, actual drone but um, the Typhoon H but it's I've never used it and and I don't think I would actually use it um, but anyway and this is the controller okay it's three areas on so it's a more up-to-date one I'm not going to go through what the controls do I'm hoping you can see that 
um, but this is a full tablet okay it's well made it can you can use it for quite a number of hours um, so you've no worry about the batteries going when you've got it up in air uh, but I had an occasion where um, I did let that happen when I was flying it and it started to warm me and next thing I know the drone's coming back <laughs> and it landed because this was telling it the battery was low it to come back um, whether that function well I didn't even know it had that function so um, but anyway and um, camera controls and there's various controls on the back it looks complicated but once you get to know how to use them it's relatively simple but you can actually go offline as well and and use it for searching internet it's, it's really good it logs onto your wi-fi um you, you've got a, a memory card uh, which you put in underneath you and um actual last night because i haven't had this out for about over 12 months all the batteries were in storage state so the um, which you need to do really if you're not going to use it that often um so i just charged one of the batteries up and what i did was th this was already charged it had held its charge um i did the firmware updates okay i updated this and i updated the um typhoon h the drone now i had a bit of problem reconnecting afterwards but um that was nothing to do with <laughs> it was me um, you're having to rack your brains again on procedures and this and I'd have to f um, I'd go on the sim just to, for maybe half an hour just get used to it before I took it out again because it's it's you know you need to do it it's like I have motorbikes and the motorbikes uh, have quite a number of them and they go out in summertime so I'd be very foolish if I just didn't um, familiarize myself with the bike when I take it back out for summer you know take it steady just have a quick run round make sure everything's right make sure you're okay before you go out on a long run um, it's just being sensible that's all it's the same with a drone if you haven't had it out for a while don't just stick it outside and self up because something will happen just be careful and I go on my sim for about half an hour before I take it back out again okay it has a um, HDMI socket up here for a headset which I will show you because I use a headset and we all know and, and remember this drone I have to have a, a flyer ID and a flying um, you have to pass the test and, and that and you have to qualify on both and then it enables you safely to fly this within the rules okay and I'm not going to go I'm not an expert on rules but I know my limitations with it and I know what I will do with it and what I won't do with it okay um, it's not um, um that's the back of it it's got a handle carry handle so there's that makes you it's a turtle or a hair one so it makes it go even faster or slow i have it on slow uh, and that's for uh, altering your camera angle okay so that's the st16 um and as i say it's it's heavy it's well made made and it's it's well finished off there's a lot of things you can do on there with this drone though then just fly it and with the controls because what you can do and, and, I, and I did it on one house because he wanted to me look at a flat roof at the back and his pitch roof to one side and uh, and go up to apex of the roof and check the ridge tiles and what I did was first time I've done it is I used waypoints and um, waypoints without going into too complicated is I flew to the first one clicked the waypoint and then flew to the next one next two or three and clicked the waypoint okay and it remembered it so I thought oh I'll try that so I brought it back home and I clicked it I told it to go on that route to those waypoints and lo and behold it flew to the first one the second one the third one and i think there were four four and i thought that's you can see how it comes in when people are surveying roofs um and that's that's the the quality of this controller um i mean i've actually been on internet last night and i i actually looked at on facebook marketplace and you could get this very same pack in excellent condition 
for £450. It was an awful lot of gear here. And I think that came with three batteries. Um, so yeah, it's it's a it's a well made um, control unit. Okay, that's the controller. I'll take this out. I'll just move the the case down. This is the unique Typhoon H. That's the battery pack. That's where it comes out. Okay, that's fully charges that. Clips in. That's the front of the drone. Obstacle avoidance, Intel obstacle avoidance. That's what that is. Okay, camera's there and it's got a camera guard on. Holds the gimbal steady. Okay, so and all you do with these is. Click them up. That's it. Okay. Now, the gimbal cover comes off. You can get different um, filters and that for the camera. Um, so, or for the lens rather. But um, yeah, it's 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 not light. It's quite well made. And when you're in flight mode, you can either leave the landing gear down or bring it up, okay, out of the way. Now, I was speaking to you earlier about how we're having difficulty at night time flying. Um, or when it's, it's seeing the landing gear, because there's nothing illuminates these. And when I were bringing it down in a bit of a dark area, I couldn't see when I were down to the ground. I have some that I designed myself that clip on here. And they're actually strobe lights really good strobe lights only tiny dome strobe lights and i made them up myself and the clip round there when i'm bringing it down those strobe lights and flying it i can see exactly where those feet are okay and in actual fact whether you've did i put the landing gear down it's in the dark you can't really see it you can see it now okay so that's that right i'll show you a bit of um what i did i did decided to do for the safety wise now i said to you earlier um that safety is paramount when you're flying something this size because you've got a um a propeller on that diameter on there you have six of them okay so you are all going near one of those propellers it will not give you a warning it'll you'll end up with either your finger end off or a, you'll be down at casualty having stitches okay it's not a thing you want to go near when it's running you keep your distance and when you're flying it you want to be at least eight meters away from it because the obstacle avoidance if you go too near it it'll try to back off when it takes up um so so what i did was i designed these these are made out of abs a new lot okay and they are actually propeller guards okay now they clip on the arm okay it sits on the rotor blade there and you put the velcro around as an extra measure and that holds that in place okay it's it's flexible enough to take it if you bump that it won't break I mean the hard impact would but it would protect now the blades are in that swing now what you've got to remember is propeller guards are not primarily for um, stopping you from damaging the blades when you tip it up they are designed as well to stop you putting your fingers in okay you'll hit that before you hit the blades um, and you never approach a drone from above you approach it from below on one of these anyway if you're going to move it grab the leg okay it's quite strong for carbon fiber the arms are carbon fiber so it's really well made and that's what that is so you can imagine when you get them on 
that side there let's put this on clip that on look at the size of that that is quite a large drone and it, it it will pick up two maybe three kilograms in weight it's that powerful um a flight time i get about 26 minutes out of a battery which doesn't seem a long time but it is when you're flying it <laughs> um and i have four batteries so that i clip them on every time and it's it's to protect you as well as the blades okay on the drone they're quite good they don't come off they clip down that they're held in place by the base of the motors and the arms they clip on the arms and they hold on with the velcro okay nice and simple and I'm, i designed those and um somebody did ask for me um uh, the STL file a long long time ago when 3D printers went out first come out and um, asked me for them and they, they put them on theirs and they worked absolutely spot on I'll just clip these down that's the drone okay i pop this back in the box the drone right i told you earlier that um you can you can actually fly them with a set of um like the shark goggles um this is slightly different it's a bit more bulky but it's quite light on your head and you can fly it from the screen so you're getting a first person view not just from the screen on the actual controller but from the camera to your eyes visually without looking at the controller okay you can only use one of these once you know what your controls are and where they are um so you need a bit of practice first it's it's the it's very very good is this and it's it made my unique okay and it's a sky view fpv goggles first person view okay now you get leads with it i'm not going to show you how the leads clipping and what have you but remember that um hdmi lead that i was telling you about well that's what you plug these into just move that down there right this is the actual goggles okay you can see that you wear them um it works off power from your there's no battery in it or anything it works from the power of your con st16 okay you don't notice you've really got it on in front of you, you get used to it and it's really good because you see it from the camera so it doesn't matter um, i mentioned to you earlier where it's all right when you first fly a drone it's going away from you left and right it's easy when you turn it around and bring it towards you it's a little bit different um well it doesn't make any difference when you've got these because you're looking from the camera's point of view and once you centralize your camera back by the switches no matter how you spun it around you're seeing what the camera's seeing okay it, they're very good um i've used it uh, a few times um but you've got to remember that when you have this on legally um and i don't think it's changed legally when you're wearing a headset you can't actually see your drone so you have to have somebody with you that can actually see your drone okay or you've got to maintain eyesight of that drone do you i hope everybody understands that if you got this on you need somebody with you just watching what the drone is doing because you can't always see you you're blinkered by what you're seeing from the camera okay um i think these are 
when I got these were about 70 80 pound thereabouts which seemed a lot at the time but it's but it, it's not um, but yeah that's the other set now earlier I told you that I actually learnt with another drone a smaller drone well this is a small drone that I have when these first came out they're about 200 pound um, they weren't cheap for what they are and it's only a small drone okay as you can see that is the drone it's got a camera in okay oops sorry there's a the camera okay and I've got numerous batteries for it and the propeller guard is one that I designed myself because there weren't any available for that but um, uh, yeah it, it works quite well like there that's got a split propeller um, blade so that needs changing because it throws it out of balance um, but and that's a good little drone but it's affected by wind it's got GPS on it but it, it, it is affected sometimes because it's so light it has difficulty keeping its, its, its where its position is whereas the big drone it just stands there in wind you can see it correcting itself it's really good is, is the big one now that's the drone there let me see if I can get this out now that is the controller for this this is a Hubson X4 FPV that's the screen on it and you can actually see what the camera's seeing so you can fly it with the screen okay but and as I say this is it's quite a good drone it's um, I learned quite a lot with it and what not to do I learned a lot of what not to do <laughs> but it give you the it, it makes you familiar with controls of a drone and how they work okay now I think there's something in the region um, about I think it was about 190 pound when it first came out and, and yet there's more advanced ones now than this that size for a fraction of the price um, but I'll pull it back in there but what I did um, that's just the, con the brochure on the actual drone itself um, and that's something else this is called a Cyclops and it's a headset now I've flown that drone with this headset um, sorry this is what made me get um, using this made me get the um, Typhoon H headset okay the Skyview now this has a rechargeable battery in and it has it has a screen inside just like the other headset okay and your aerials that you put up and what you do is once you fire your drone up and your drone's working then you, you scan and it picks that drone's signal up to the controller and it, it sort of connects to that signal and you can see what that drone sees okay so you can fly it the same now this set is nowhere near as well made it's not bad as the Skyview Uniques um, but I think this were about £50 well, less less I think it was uh, and I've used it I, mean, I don't use it now because I don't fly this drone really and because it was a present I've no intentions of sometimes I get it out for grandkids if they want a little play but um, and it's a very good drone you have a rechargeable battery and uh, and it and as I say that came into its own with that that's when I first decided with the big drone I'm going to get a headset and in actual fact this headset I have tried to see if it will connect with the uh, ST16 and the Typhoon H and it does I can pick that signal and look at it on the screen however the quality is nowhere near as good as the sky views but it's good enough to fly with okay so as I say this this is just to show you um, that 
just refresh people's memories of, of the actual um, drone that I did a video on. Um, it's I'm, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do show you for the people that ask the question on what this uh, the flight sims like. Now I don't know whether there's any other flight sims out there that I could use the unique drone on. I don't know, and the ST16. Um, I've no idea. There probably is, um, but I only use this one. So what I'm going to do now is, once I've put all my gear away, I'm going to um, take it to the PC and I'm going to show you the ST16 connected to the software. I'm not going to show you how, it's pointless showing you how it's, it connects up because it's just like binding the drone, really. Tip you don't move this. Um, but I just want to show you what the software is. It is basic, but it does give you the ability to get used to those controls. And that is something that you need. I mean, it's one of those, um, it's Catch-22, isn't it? You can either buy a drone, get it up and running, check it out and see how you do. Is that right? Is that wrong? That's everybody's choice. It wasn't my choice. I had £1,500 in that drone kit. This one, the small one, £198. And I had one or two crashes with that. Um, and fortunately the prop gear I, I broke one set of blades with the small one I flew it with a headset and I've, I always have the prop guards on um, and it, it does save it a lot when it bounces into some and even that one when you catch your finger on it hurts it's cut me a couple of times um, but even that learning on that I would not step into using the unique you need some um need some plan of action to get used to the controller i'd know the way of doing it but i went on to a, a, a youtube channel and a, a guy on there who were, he's really good with drones i've forgotten his name and he said please everybody that's got a drone get used to the flight controls before you try and do something further afield or in proximity to people or anything like that he said please just be aware they are um if they hit you they'll injure you there's no mistake on that that one will the only even the little one will so you've got to be on the side of safety every time you fly one of these i have a landing pad and I have a set of cones i put out i don't have anybody come anywhere near when that's waiting to um to take off and what you'll find is i have a local park down near me and if i went down there now and put that drone on the thing the next thing you look around you have 20 kids all wanting to look at the drone oh put it up mr P go on fly it fly it you know it's dangerous to do it in surroundings where you've no control over the people that's there um so you putting the cones out gives them a perimeter to keep away uh, and the landing pad um, it gives you a focal point to bring it back okay right here we are at the um, the PC now so this is it's called UV, UF, UAV pilot flight simulator right? unique Typhoon H um, I've actually um, bound the uh, you go up to it's pretty simple um, radio bind unit and just go through the online prompts um, I'm not going to show you how to do that it's plugged into USB and then you've got your controller sat in front of you and then that's the drone okay now obviously the red button at the top of the controller that you could see when I showed you earlier is the one that starts with propellers so if you hold that in for three seconds there they are so the blades are sound and it's not going anywhere all right so then what you do is you push the left stick up and you can see that's flying I can bring it down and it's it's quite responsive okay and it's holding its height might not seem as though it is but it is it's holding its height so then at that height there if I want to fly away I push the right stick forward 
okay because the camera's pointing that way it's central but pointing the way I'm gonna go so I can point that that way obviously off it goes let go of the stick and it's holding its height and it's holding where it's last stopped and it's picked that up and it'll hold that station because of the satellites okay that's when you're flying the real drone but it does simulate this now if I wanted to go left I put the stick left okay as you can see let go and it'll center and hover at that height if I want to bring the drone back to me okay I'll just hold it height a bit if I want to bring the drone back to me I'm bringing it back okay all right if however I want to spin the drone round the left stick left and you can see what that's doing okay or right that spins the drone so that's the left stick left and right spinning the drone okay up down right left left spin right spin okay you can also if you want to if I put the camera on uh, if you watch the camera now it's turning round can you see that the camera is turning okay now you do, do that with the com controls which is left um, it's a little knob at the top left okay so that's turned that and I've turned it back to where it clicks in the center but if I knock the camera control off you see the camera centralize again so you can always pick up where the camera is especially if you're flying um, sort of with goggles on it gives you the ability to know that your drone's in that orientation okay um, and I bring it a bit closer so you can see it as close as I can get it now I'll just turn I'll, I'll just revolve this round so you can see the camera lens sideways on now if you watch the camera lens you can actually tilt that okay by the little knob on the left hand side at the back and it, well it's a knob it's a little rotating thing you see the camera tilting down and the camera tilting up. You might not be able to see that. I'll I'll rotate that round so you can see it better. I don't know if you can see it, but the camera is rotating down to the ground and then back up. Okay. So you've full control of the camera. Alright, that's tilt mode, that's that. So I'll bring that back round towards you. Okay, you can just see the reflection off the lens there. Now I've just brought the landing gear up there. Okay. But at any given time, there's a switch on the top right. I can put the landing gear back down. Okay. And this is what I was trying to explain to you. If you can imagine you're flying this at night and you're picking fireworks up or anything like that, Okay, there is a limit to what the camera will see in the dark, obviously, but at dusk, and sometimes it's a, if you're in the shadow, if I bring in that down now, I'll, I'll just take it over to the where the trees are, say over there, okay, and I'll bring the gear up. Now, if you watch, if you were in dark or dusk and you're bringing that down okay that's at a, a reasonable height there if I'm bringing that down now you can see oh, you're getting it down you're getting it down you're getting it down you think oh wait a minute here have I put the gear down well 
that's what I did those landing lights for and they're really good the strobes they tell you exactly where the feet are so if I orientate that round a bit more okay stop that there and then I bring that down to land and it, it it's as gentle as this and actually controlling it in real, real time I can bring it down now you're looking at that you've no indication at night time how close you are with the legs towards the ground and you can bump it but this and the, the controls are so gentle and delicate there we're down okay press the button hold for three seconds and the blade stop just like it does on the reel now it don't take you much to get to know um, the drone by using this flight sim back up again up again okay and then we'll fly you see and Okay, so as you can see, it's 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 quite good to learn you the controls, you know, of bringing it down and spinning the camera around, you know. Or if you let's from there, and then I'll fly it away. there we are good bit away and you think right I'll bring it back now right I'm not controlling that that's brought it back to home itself okay and it's landing itself I'm not landing that and the real drone does that it's not just the flight sim all I've done is flick to home it's a bit of a heavy landing like I do, tend to do a bit and it switches off okay so that's that now you've different mode you've smart mode and angle mode um, and I aren't going to go into those it's something that you need to learn just the basics flying of it but start the props up again off we go up in the air away from Okay. And now I'm going to bring it back home a little bit. And depending on the size of your screen, depending now, it's very difficult to see it there. I think, oh, right, I'll bring it back. All I've done is flick the switch to home. Now what you've got to remember is, in real life, there's no trees around it. There is, but you can't fly into them. So, well, you can, actually. But um, if I were to take it in and out of some obstacles, which could quite easily do with the obstacle avoidance, okay, what happens is, if you request it to come home, what you must remember is that you might have flown around these obstacles to get to where it is when you click home it doesn't go back the way it came it comes up and directly towards you if there's anything in between like a tall tree it will hit it or the obstacle avoidance will avoid that but it'll want to it'll have to go around it but if you haven't got that on what will happen is it will it will crash into that tree okay so it doesn't go back the route it came it goes up and comes towards you and lands itself and it does that it tells you that if the battery is getting low as well it wants to come home there's so many things it tells you on this tablet 
you know how many satellites you've got uh, position height everything and obviously I don't go above 400 feet because that's illegal um, uh, I very rarely go above 300 feet to be honest with you I, only I'm, I'm taking an aerial shot or something I, I might do somebody's house or or the wanting the, a shot of the garden and the house and I might just take it up a little bit okay so that's the basic controls of the flight sim all right um, and like now th this is what I was telling you about the um, the actual drone itself on the safety zone now on the safety drone you want to be at least about eight meters away from the the drone because the obstacle obstacle avoidance on it if you're too close or it's too close to an object that's why you shouldn't do it in a small yard at the back because that's actuated and that what it will do is as soon as it tries to take off you put the left lever up to lift the drone up then what will happen is it'll tilt backwards it'll try to get away or whichever side the obstacle is at and it'll try and pull away and you'll end up crashing the drone so just be aware of that but it's I love this sim so I just spend half an hour on it before I go out and then it's easy enough to you know you get like now it's different orientated as you can see that um, you can see the camera's pointing to the right and it's sideways onto me so if I push the what I would think is the oh it's taking it sideways on whereas before if you remember this is why you need to get used to it it's bringing it towards me okay so your right stick takes it right and it's okay it's just getting used to the controls now that's coming back to me now I bring it down and I can land it lots softer than what it bringing it home does and it lands that gently in real life okay off so I just thought that that's shown you um, for the, the gentleman that asked me about it um, is the simulator that I use it's basic you can get different scenarios for it but and uh, but I haven't downloaded any I've just used the basic but there are some I'll show you the um, the actual challenge that you can do uh, box over okay right you see that now the blades are already running it starts it off for you okay and it, and it's when you go up you'll see a box you see that okay just bring it back round It's, I always when if you're going to do this, um, then pull it away from the the box. Don't fly it straight in because it's it's pretty easy to do. So I'm, I'm coming into the box, okay. And when you get into the box, it will start to rotate, okay. And the object is you've got to keep it within that box, okay. And keep the the circles like in the centre. Right, you've different challenges, you've one wet boxes going up and down a bit more and it's a bit harder but um, in essence what you need to do is learn you want uh, like um, to be able to operate the drone without thinking too much about it and, and, and work within your limitations if you're not a good um, uh,
pilot in that respect then work to what you are capable of um, work it simple and you'll, you'll maintain a, um, a safe working environment and you'll, you'll go back home with an undamaged drone ok now this is a controller um, obviously switched on and uh, I'm not going to go through all the because there's a lot of specs there believe it or not and it takes you a bit of time to get used to it, you know but you can see down here satellites and positioning and GPS and and your calibration for your compass uh, and it's all there um, and your different models you know if you go on there you go out of flight mode and your different models that's for my um, for my actual sim um, and then you've got your H920 which this isn't and the Typhoon H okay um, and you can create another model whatever you want to do like it's not a hard and fast rule you just got to get used to actually what the controller actually does there's, there's buttons on it like here you can go from video mode you can take still pictures um, and there's various some buttons don't do anything um, because they're not uh, there's no the work but they don't control anything in that saying on the typhoon h um you've got your studs for your next strap that go on okay um and then if you want to go into a pad okay leave the flight mode get your apps up and there you are you can go on to internet if you want and download apps so it becomes quite a um a useful tool as regards um, if you want you sat at home and you think oh what about that you can go on to your system you can and, and that as a chip uh, uh, micro SD card that you can store your photos on on that but as I say it's not about showing you how this works it was mainly to show it just re refresh uh, people's memories on the drone and what it's capable of and also um, what the flight sim does basic as it is it does give you the function to get used to the controls before you go out there and fly this drone okay well that's it for this video um, I hope people found it interesting um, it's just a quick really overview of the drone itself the packaging that it comes in what it comes with it with the kit um, the controller um, and also mainly the uh, UAV pilot the uh, flight sim um, unit that I use and how good it is as basic as it is how good it is at getting you used to using the controls and the orientation of a drone okay it's a little bit different than a model aircraft somewhere because the, the whole unit just spins around and then whoa you put right you're going left and and backwards and you're going forwards and <laughs> so just be aware of that it's a useful tool and I hope the two gentlemen that asked about it what I do um, then uh, obviously it, it should help them so right end of the video so like and subscribe give us a thumbs up don't forget I like the thumbs up I've had some thumbs downs believe me um, and I've had some um, not trolls but i've had some um not good comments sometimes so um it do, it is what it is uh, i don't do it up there to make money i don't put videos on to make money i do videos because i enjoy doing it and i enjoy helping people and the good comments that i do get back so remember that um and as i always say and in my video and especially if you're flying one of these be safe and be careful and bye till next time bye bye